day just going to go through and debunk Steven Anderson's really heretical and just stupid uh, post-trib argument. Post-tribbers, these heretics, they always have to do this. They have to make the second coming and the rapture the same thing. Because Matthew 24 is very clearly about the second coming. And 1 Corinthians 15 and 1 Thessalonians 4 are about the rapture. So in order to make them line up, you have to say, oh, well, they're talking about the same event. Because they're clearly not. And post trivers they always have to do this to prove because Matthew 24 is the only passage that they have a leg to stand on because it says immediately after the tribulation. But they forget to mention the rest of, the, of verse 29 where it says of those days. They have to make the, trib the tribulation into a title as well. You know, there's reasons for them doing that too because the Bible says you know, you'll have tribu tribulation in this life. So they have to say, see, we're going to go through the tribulation to so make it into a title. They have to do all these, her these heretical arguments. But Matthew 24 is about the second coming. It's not talking about the same event as 1 Corinthians 15 and 1 Thessalonians 4. I'm going to prove that to you. So 1 Corinthians 15, 51 to 54 and 1 Thessalonians 4, 14 to 18 both mention dead saints being resurrected and going up before the living saints. That's in 1 Corinthians 15, 52 and 1 Thessalonians 4, 16. There is not one mention of dead saints being resurrected in Matthew 24. Not one. Show, one, show me one verse in Matthew 24 where there's dead saints being resurrected. It's not there. It's not talking about the same thing. 1 Corinthians 15.52 and 1 Thessalonians 4.16 both mention the trump of God, or God speaking with his voice like a trump. There's not, not one mention of this, of the trump of God, or God speaking with his voice like a trump in Matthew 24. Matthew 24 mentions great signs. See Matthew 24.3, Matthew 24.24, and Matthew 24.30 happening before the appearing of Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 1.22 says the Jews require a sign. The time of Jacob's trouble is very clearly for the Jewish people. There is not one mention, there is zero mention of any great signs in 1 Corinthians 15.51-54 or 1 Thessalonians 4.14-18. There's no mention of any great signs hap appearing or happening before basically we get called up in the clouds. Not one mention of that. It's not talking about the same thing. Just by comparing the two passages there's not, not the same thing. There's no dead saints in Matthew 24 being resurrected. There's no mention of the trump of God in Matthew 24. And there's no great signs happening in 1 Corinthians 15 or 1 Thessalonians 4. Because the Matthew 24 passage is about the second coming of Jesus Christ. And then the, the other two passages, 1 Corinthians 15 and 1 Thessalonians 4, are about the rapture, properly called the blessed hope or the catching away. So, but Anderson, these post trippers they always have to make it into the same thing to prove their heresy. So, we're going to watch some clips from a little sermon he did, and just going to go through and debunk this. And just his arguments are really, really heretical, and just, it's like these mental acrobatics you have to go through to make up these arguments. It's ridiculous. So, let's get started. Now, he says in verse number 40, he says, Then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill. The one shall be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doth come. And these verses is where the movie Left Behind takes its title, where he talks about two people being in the field, right? One's taken, the other's what? Left behind. You know, left behind. That's where they're getting this from. Saying, you know, one's taken, the other left. So what's funny is that then to people to defend their false movie, and their false book series, here's what they'll say, oh, Matthew 24 is not about the rapture. Um, it isn't. There's no mention of dead saints being resurrected. There's no mention of the trump of God. It's not about the rapture. So, it, it just, it's a basic thing you can see, but he just can't see it. He's deceiving his followers. Let's continue. They'll say, Matthew 24 is not about the rapture, it's about the second coming of Christ. Well, first of all, 1 Thessalonians 4, the most famous rapture passage, calls the rapture the coming of the Lord. So unless it's coming 1.5, that would make it the second coming, right? First coming, Bethlehem. Second coming, in the clouds, trumpet sounds, we're caught up together with them, according to 1 Thessalonians 4. So this is another common tactic from post-trippers, is they have to say, well, you know, you post-trippers, you pre-trippers believe in a third coming. Because what they have to do is they have to say where it says the coming of the Lord, they have to make it out where it's the second coming where Jesus Christ physically, his feet touch the earth. It's not the same thing. The rapture is called the coming of the Lord, but Jesus Christ does not physically touch the earth. But at the second coming, at the end of the time of Jacob's trouble, he does physically touch the earth. That's the distinction there. Because post you can see post trippers they have to blend together and say, see, you know, they must believe in a third coming. No, we believe in the coming of the Lord, where he calls us up in the clouds, then the second coming, where he physically touches the earth. 
That's what we believe. There is no third coming, but they have to make up the straw man argument. Because they have to make it seem like we're saying that he physically touches the earth when he calls up the saints. No. The coming of the Lord is he comes for his saints. And then the second coming is when he physically touches the ground. I mean, it, it, it's, it's so simple, but he just, you know, is just deceiving his followers. Let's continue. You say, oh, Revelation 19, you know, he comes on a white horse at Armageddon. That's never called the coming of Christ. Show me one place in the Bible where Jesus on the white horse at Armageddon is ever called the coming of Christ. It isn't there. And if it were called the coming of Christ, it would be a third coming. But that's not, it's never called that. It's never referred to as that. Whenever we see the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints, for example, that's where it says, them that are asleep in Jesus, will God bring with them. Okay? Um, it's not talking about that. When it says them which are asleep in Jesus, it's talking about the dead saints being resurrected. And Jesus Christ does come back with his saints. But he doesn't, because what he's doing, he's going to mix it together where it says, see, you know, because it just shows the mental acrobatics these post trippers have to do. He's going to come and get his saints and then going to come back with his saints. So he's making it like it's the same event. No, he comes for his saints at the rapture and then comes back with his saints and basically destroys the Antichrist and his army. That's what's happening there. But he has to basically make it out like, oh, they, they you know, I mean, you're just going to see the mental acrobatics he does. So he says basically that, you know, he's going to come with his saints, going to get the same thing, he's going to come back with them. So what happened with the marriage supper of the Lamb? So wait a second, we go back up, then we come right back down? Because you're going to see that's what he implies. So let's continue. Okay. At the rapture, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, people will say, well, the difference between the rapture and the second coming is that at the rapture he comes for his saints, and at the second coming, he comes with his saints. Wait a minute. It says that if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with them at the rapture. Um, Anderson just added to scripture. It does not say at the rapture. Okay. And again, it's talking about the resurrection of the dead. And what he said earlier was actually the correct belief. He comes for his saints. We, we are called up together to meet him in the clouds. That's what the verse says. Then, at the second coming, he comes down with his saints after the marriage supper of the Lamb. It's, all, it's so clear, but he just is either willfully ignorant or just deceiving his followers and doesn't see it himself. Ridiculous. But he has, see, see what he's trying to do. He's trying to say that basically he's implying that we basically go back up and come right back down. Because if the second coming and the rapture are the same thing, then the marriage supper, I guess, is not happening. And then we just go back up and we'll come right back down on the horses. Um, that's ridiculous. It's not what the Bible teaches. We are called up together with him in the clouds. That's what 1 Thessalonians 4 and 1 Corinthians 15 says. You know, it's just, it's just the mental acrobatics and just the heresy of these post trippers is ridiculous. Continue. So he's coming with his saints at the rapture. That's what the Bible says. I mean, they, they have all these cute things of the difference between the second coming and the rapture. No, the rapture is the second coming. Yeah. Wow. So... And according to Anderson, we go back up, we come right back down. So when Jesus Christ touches the earth, we are basically, we go up to the rapture, we have the marriage supper, I guess. We have it, but then we don't have it. Then we come back down with them. You know, it's ridiculous. Again, where is the mention of dead saints in Matthew 24 being resurrected? Where is the, where is the trump of God mentioned? Where is the great signs mentioned in 1 Corinthians 15? Where, where are they mentioned anywhere in 1 Corinthians 15 and 1 Thessalonians 4? It's not the same thing. And by the way, Revelation 19 is actually the second coming. Because you compare Matthew 24 with Revelation 19, it lines up. He comes uh, back on the right ho white horse. He comes with the, all his saints. Because when you know, he comes with his angels, and you know the Bible says, we're, we're, you know, I don't remember the exact verse off the top of my head, but you know, we are as the angels of God in heaven when you're a redeemed saint. Let me just try to find that verse, actually. Because I, I want to make sure I have the right scripture reference. But when he says the angels of God, I do believe it's talking about, yeah, see, it's Matthew chapter 22, verse 30. For in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. So when he comes back with his angels, I do believe it's coming back with his redeemed saints. But that's not at the rapture. It's at the second coming. After the rapture, after the marriage supper of the Lamb. Who, can, I mean, who can't figure this out? It's ridiculous. But it just shows the deception these post trippers get themselves into. And if you want some proof for a pre time of Jacob trouble catching away. Because the proper term is not rapture, pre trip rapture, it's the pre time of Jacob trouble catching away. 
here are just a quick some quick proofs I'll just highlight right now and just read you because I have some of this stuff written down in my notes so I'll just read this out to you guys so three proofs for a pre Tom and Jacob trouble catching away of the bride of Christ which is the proper term not pre-trip rapture so Ephesians chapter uh, 1 verse 10 to 14 says in verse 10 that Jesus will gather together in one all things in Christ. Compare verse 10 to Galatians 3.28. We're all one in Christ Jesus. This is about the body of Christ basically. Verse, verse 13 says that believers are, are quote sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, eternal security. And verse 14 shows the redemption of the quote purchased possession. Compare verse 14 with 1 first, with first, with first Corinthians 15, 51 to 50, 52 to 54 because we get an incorruptible body of the rapture. So we're, we're, it's the redemption of the purchased possession. You get an incorruptible body. This has to happen before the time of Jacob's trouble because Revelation 14, 9 through 11 is clear that if anyone, not just unsaved people, take the mark, they will get God's wrath and end up in the lake of fire. If a sealed born again believer goes into the time of Jacob's trouble and takes that mark, they could lose their salvation and thus making God a liar. So which is it? You know, we're taking out the events in Ephesians 1 has to happen before the time of Jacob's trouble because you could lose your salvation if you take the mark and it would therefore make God a liar because I guess you become unsealed and sent to hell basically. Romans chapter 11 verse 125 that there's going to be a time when God is provoking the Jews to jealousy verse 11 that's in verse 11 and their, and their fullness is going to come in after the fullness of the Gentiles see verse 15 and verse 25 if Christians go into the time of Jacob's trouble there would be no fullness of the, of the Jews that would come in because the fullness of the Gentiles hasn't happened yet the time of Jacob's trouble is very clearly for the Jewish people. See Daniel chapter 9, verse 24. It says, it's determined upon thy people, you know, which is Israel. And Matthew 24, uh, 16 and Matthew 24, 20. The body of Christ leaves before God goes back dealing with Israel in the time of Jacob's trouble. Because that's when the fullness of the Jews comes in after the fullness of the Gentiles at the rapture. And final proof. 2 Thessalonians 2, 7 8 is clear that somebody has to be removed before the Antichrist can, be, can show up, that somebody is the body of Christ. The Antichrist is currently being hindered from showing up. Revelation chapter 5, 9 through 11 shows blood redeemed saints, also Gentile saints, who are in heaven before the Antichrist is revealed in Revelation chapter 6, verse 2. So you have the Antichrist is being hindered from showing up, and that's that basically someone has to be removed, that someone is the body of Christ. They have to be removed before the Antichrist can show up. That's why you have blood redeemed saints who are in heaven before the Antichrist is revealed in Revelation 6 2 in John's vision. So those, those, those are three, and there's other proofs too. Those are just three strong proofs for a pre time Jacob of trouble catching away. So don't believe this post trib satanic heresy from Stephen Anderson, and don't, don't believe the lies of, of this, this Catholic heresy that is the post trib rapture. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.